Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, uh, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an, I'm an attorney at Mark O'Connell. Uh, we do nothing but elder law, but this show is not about elder law. It's about Frank and Mary. You, many of you know my, uh, my, in my presentations, I often talk about Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., and their goal is to live in their house till they die and be buried in the backyard. Right now, Frank and Mary's goal in the COVID-19 world is just to survive day to day. And so, and so Chris and I decided that we would do, Chris Linquist, my wonderful co-host who runs the library, uh, Chris and I decided to do a special set of shows specifically devoted to the issues that you're facing right now dealing with COVID-19. Uh, we, uh, we have two wonderful guests whom Chris is going to introduce, who I think can just share a ton of information with you regarding what you may be going through and what you may be needing to deal with and how to deal with it. Chris. Thank you, Arthur. So uh, we are very fortunate today to have two wonderful guests so we have Liz Tridiak, and uh, Liz is the new senior center director. So we're kind of introducing her to the community. Liz, I don't know how long you've been in the, on the job, but I think a week or less, right? So you're hitting the ground running, and, and we'll talk about uh, the senior center. And then we have June David Fours, who's the uh, youth and family services director. And June, I know you've been here more than a week, but I don't know actually how long you've been the, the director of youth and family services. So um, we'll talk about each of your departments and, and how you can you know, help people during this uh, COVID crisis. So um, take it away, Arthur. Well, I was going to say, I know that we, when we were talking, when all of us were talking earlier, June, June had talked about wanting to just give a kind of a brief sense of what you folks do, of what June does, of how, of what the department does, because I think that's going to help us with kind of an overview of how everything is connecting. And then Liz, I, I was hoping after that that we could have you talk a little bit about who you are and how you got here, right? You know, this is you know, this is your this is a strange introduction for a lot of seniors. You're, the first time they're seeing you is on TV. You're, you're going to be walking into the senior center as a star, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and kind of. <laughs> And, and, and maybe talk about what you were th thinking you were going to be doing when you got here. Uh, and, and then and talk a little bit about how, how folks are dealing, you know, how you're dealing, how folks are dealing with the, the corona issues. Sure. So, June, could, could we start off and just kind of have you kind of... Good. Sure. So, I've been with the department for 13 years. And um, I am so pleased to have this opportunity to talk to the residents directly. Um, not just about what we're doing around the COVID-19 outbreak, but also in terms of our ongoing programs and services. I would like to say first that our mission has never been so important as we work in collaboration with other town departments in our community partnerships to identify current issues in the community and work together to create programming to address that. Um, so I wanted to start off with that. A lot of our services that we do on an ongoing basis are also relevant to right now. So we provide counseling, we provide in-school counseling for families who can't get to our office. We provide case management, helping families get into housing to find food resources, um, fuel resources. We provide the fuel assistance program, and we do a lot of referral and information. So we get calls. Last year, we got over 500 calls from residents, and we refer, referred to them over 1,000 different social services. Mm -hmm. So that's an important piece, too. So before I get into what we're doing in particular right now, I the main thing I want to stress is if anyone has a question about anything, to please call us. Even though our buildings are closed, we're very much open to the public via telephone or email. So please do not hesitate. There's no question that that is not important. Um, and, and, so, what, and, what, and what's the best number at which to which they could call? Sure. Yeah. And by the way, I just want to point out for folks watching from home, uh, you, June's home looks a lot like her office. That's because <laughs> June actually lives now in her office. She's, actually, she's there all the time, so you can always reach out to her. So June, June what's, the, what's the best phone number? 
Sure, it's 508-393-5020. And it's gonna, it's being transferred to my my phone. So please be patient if you have to leave a message. If I'm on the other line, I'll get right back to people. But the main thing for them to know is they're not just dialing a random machine. They're actually calling okay. your phone number. And you're, gonna, and you're gonna get back to them. That's, and that's Absolutely. A, that's a, yeah. That's a big, that's a big deal. So yeah. yeah so can we, can we talk to Liz for for, for Chris? Can we talk to Liz for a few minutes? Sure. Do you let's, think? Let's okay. So, Liz. Hi. So so Liz. Yeah. So it's just so that people can pronounce it. Is it Liz Tridiac? Tr tr Tridiac. Yep. Tridiac. Okay. Okay. People are gonna have to get used to this. You know, this is part of part of learning. And so and so, um, welcome here. Um, Thank you. And. and 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 where 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 did you come from? You don't look like you you are you are like a like an ancient council on aging director. You look like a pretty young <laughs> council on aging director. So where did you come from? And 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 what were you thinking you were going to do before COVID nineteen showed up? <laughs> That's a very great question. Um, so I w actually was a COA director in the town of Littleton prior to this. Mm -hmm. And then prior to that, even I worked at Faith Health Elder Services, which is our local ac uh, aging services access point for almost 10 years. And Arthur, I don't know if you remember, but you interviewed me about six years ago. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's, a long, that's a long time ago. Was, was yeah. this, did, did we do it here in North Pro? Did we do it in another town? It was um, at Hudson High School, and we talked about the Mass Health Frail Elder Waiver. At Hudson. <laughs> Well, you know, this is showing my age, you know, <laughs> as well as as well as the status of my memory, right? So, so you so you've come into what's really a a, a vibrant, a vibrant senior center. So, 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 what you, can can you just kind of talk about what do you you know what do you what were you thinking about the senior center and, and you know and what's your sense of it? And then maybe you can talk a little bit about the 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 the, the resources that seniors may be right now kind of kind of kind of needing and maybe chris and i can ask you about that and then we can go back to june and talk about how those relate because this show well we've typically focused on seniors it's it's really relevant to a lot of folks now because a lot of people are watching because they're at home so could we could, how about that great sure um so as you know today is my sixth day on the job and hit the ground you're doing running. great you're doing great <laughs> thanks <laughs> yeah. um, but I've actually, I've been in the aging services profession for about 15 years now. Um, and I was drawn to North Row one for its absolutely beautiful center, which I'm in right now, it's gorgeous. Um, and it just, it really has an abundance of programs and activities and the bistro, it's so, it's so innovative that I just, I had to really jump at the chance to come here and be part of this community. Um, so what I thought I was going to be doing when I came here prior to the whole COVID-19 situation was really trying to see what we could do with the creative programming. Um, I know we want to reach more people, reach a broader population here, and I really just wanted to get creative and see what we could do. Um, in terms of what we're doing now, my main message to people is that we are here and we're looking for you. So anyone out in the community, any seniors, if anyone has a concern, a question, if they're lonely and just need some social interaction and just want to talk, we're here and answering the phones, whether it's at our desks, at home, you can call us, call us for anything. Um, our fantastic outreach worker, Jocelyn, is here and she's doing her information and referral services. She's helping people still with their health insurance questions and referring them to um, like pharmacy outreach programs. We're still working 100% here and we're here for any community member that needs us. That's that's pretty terrific. And, and by the way, I just want to ask you as, as we ask June. So if, if someone is calling, first of all, it sounds like if someone isn't picking up, that isn't because it's going into the ether. Someone will call them back soon because right people are paying attention to it. But what that's is right. the what is the number that they should call? It's 508. 393-5035. 393-5035. And by the way, to both Liz and to June, we'll both 
our, our Dana Volk, who put our wonderful producer from here at North Row Cable, will put both of those numbers up on the on the show, so they'll get the number as you've talked about it, but also at the end for people who want to call. Yeah. Chris, I know because you you just do yeah. so much work with with you know that's involved with the senior center. Can yes. can you you got, you got any particular questions to Liz regarding kind of what she's doing and where she's going? Yeah, Liz. So I just wanted to say, I mean, you're filling big shoes. Kelly Burke did an outstanding job, and and obviously, you know, you're coming in on 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 kind of the shoulders of a giant in the sense that she really developed, uh, you know, built that building and developed a lot of the programs. So I, I know there's a lot of momentum going, and obviously, you want to keep that going, and we're just thrilled to have you uh, oh, on board. You. So and and the library definitely works with the senior center. We look forward to working with you um, on, on on a number of programs uh, serving the seniors. So. A couple things and kind of food related. So we, we interviewed um, uh, uh, Christine Alessandro from Bay Path Elder Services just a week ago. I'm sure you know Christine. Yeah. And she said that the Meals on Wheel program is still up and running. They mm -hmm. don't have as many volunteers at the moment. They, I think they're down about 80% of their volunteers because of the crisis. But they're still doing meals delivery. And are you involved with, with Bay Path as well? Sure. PayPath is a great partner to us, and they, I know they're still delivering their meals to our clients um, and helping us with any food resources for anyone who needs it. We have our local pantries who are still assisting residents as well, um, and and there's there's help out there for people who need it. Great, great. And when, and, and when June talks about being able to call just in order to have somebody to talk to, you're saying that you, you you folks are comfortable with that because I think that's that's so that's a big piece of this and of course for seniors maybe maybe for everybody but certainly for seniors you hit so many people they'll say oh I don't want to bother you you know I don't want to be a burden right and so unless they've got a particular reason to call they may not even think about calling just in order to hear your voice so so for, for the people who are watching. You get to meet her right now. This is a great time to call. Liz, Liz is just there. She's not like buried at the bistro, you know. She's not running from hither and yon. This is a good time to just chat, you know. You can just talk. Right. But, but to, to have that, right? To have mm -hmm. that, to have that ability is a, is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. June, June, can you talk about, if, you know, if you don't mind my asking, or or, or Chris, you have other questions for for Liz? I, I had a well, question. June, I mean, I, I'm so interested about Liz's background, and I'm sure we'll we'll find out more. You know, where she is is from originally. Are you are you a Massachusetts native? Are you from the area? Do you have um, you know family, uh, kids in school, or you know just biographical information? That's mainly. sure. <laughs> yeah, I actually grew up in the far, far western part of the state in Lee. Um, so exit two on the Mass Pike, yep. it's pretty much Albany. Um, I moved out to this area uh, like 10, 12 years ago. I'm a current uh, resident of Berlin. I have two small children, um, one and a half and three, and not old enough for the school system yet. But um, yeah, we, we've set up our little homestead here in Berlin, and I'm three miles down the road from the senior center. Fantastic. You, they're one and a half and three? Yes. You, you, you look, and you're in the office right now. Right? Yes, I so where are, what are they doing? how are you handling that that's going to be tough multitasking multitasking there's a great quote that says when you're a working, when you're a working mother and you're juggling all these balls you have to just know which ones are glass and which ones are plastic and a glass one you gotta keep glass in the air and plastic if it falls like the laundry sometimes it will fall that's great that's great now, can, can we go back to June and ask ask a little bit about about, you know, a couple of the programs that you talked about? Among other things, June, you were really also talking about folks literally just being able to call you, you know, if there's a if there's a, if there's a you know, with a whole variety of problems and in, in that you've actually, you know, you've it, there's a real social work component to the work that you do. You're not just referring people to other sources. You're actually trying to help people figure out how exactly. to deal today exactly and i'm sorry no i was just going to ask you to talk about that sure so one of the things i see happening right now is we're a very small department there's myself full-time 
And then I have a part-time office assistant and a part-time clinician. And so even though we rely on other organizations, we make referrals, there's a lot that we do in-house. So what I've seen recently is our collaboration with our partnerships has become magnified. So for instance, Westboro Helping Hands in town is a great group of volunteers that do the medical equipment loan program, they do the holiday program, and they do they have an emergency fund. So for instance, recently, we've had two families call. One of the parents have gotten laid off and it takes a while to get on unemployment. So they were getting behind on their electric bill. They were due to be shut off. <laughs> and so I made a referral to Helping Hands Emergency Fund and they brought the bill up to date. That's huge for these families. Um, so I, I can't stress enough the importance of our partnerships. We're also gonna soon be meeting with the Interfaith Clergy, Clergy Association and talk about what we're all doing and pooling our resources. Um, the North Grove Food Pantry continue, continues to stay open, which, which is amazing. They, they're doing it in a, in a safe way, um, but I know a lot of our clients really depend on that. Um, so groups out there are really stepping it up. And this sense of volunteerism is not new to North Grove. You know, I, I don't know how our department would do it without all of their help because it maximizes what we can all provide to residents. That's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty that's a pretty comprehensive summary, right? <laughs> and, and, it, and it is interesting as, as, as the two of you are talking, because I, I, I was I was recently reading a, a, a poll. I was reading some stuff in the in the Times because they were talking about folks' reactions to kind of what is happening right now, right? Mm -hmm. And and some of the reactions really are different among seniors. There's a, there's there's a greater kind of concern for the urgency of this because of course you've got among seniors a greater sense that this could kill me, you know. Mm -hmm. Although it affects a whole broad, you know, a range of people, right? But among seniors, and among seniors, most folks are retired. Whereas among you know the younger and the younger cohort in that poll from like ages like 45 to 55 or 45 to 60, there was a lot more concern about oh my god you know my job is at risk I'm you know what what am I going to do right mm -hmm. so the two of you maybe are are, are kind of facing different true concerns yeah. and so, which which has got to be a tough thing right because everybody you know they're, they're, of course we we all have our own interests and stuff you know. So to try to figure that out is going to be really daunting. So, so June, are there any particular things at this point that you think are missing? So if, if, if let me put it, or put another way, if there were um, people that you thought, or volunteers that you thought were needed someplace, are there people, places that things are missing? Or, or as far as you're concerned, if someone calls and has a problem, is there, is there somebody that's going to be there to help them? Yes. I've got to say that John Kadir, our town administrator, has been working day and night and is so conscientious and always telling me, if there's, a, if there's a gap there, if there's a need, please let me know. I feel in our department, we have a really good safety network with all of the um, partnerships I spoke about, and there's lots more. Um, so if a need comes to our um, attention. I feel like I have sources to go to to help address that need. Mm. Yeah. And Liz. Yeah, I just wanted to say I've only been here a week, but I already feel that the the interdepartmental collaboration, yeah. the police, the fire, town administration involving June's department, senior center, um, it really does feel like this is a team effort and we're going at this together. And that's the only way that we can, you know, continue to serve people in these crazy times. In difficult times, in difficult yeah. times. Yeah. Arthur had a question for Liz, if I may. So Liz, uh, I know that Kelly developed, um, I think it was through a, a federal grant. Uh, uh, Northboro is, is a come to be dementia friendly community. Mm -hmm. And I know it's with two other towns, and I think Hudson may be one of them. I forget the other town, but were you Martin. familiar with, with that program before? 
Yep. Yep, okay. absolutely. I, I was at Bay Path when that um, was first established, so I was familiar with the whole process. And I just have to say that Kelly really did such a fantastic job here, and she really set set this up so the next uh, yep. director coming in would be successful. She really did a wonderful job. So will that continue? I mean, we'll continue to be a, a, a dementia-friendly community. I mean, we actually at the library um, over the past you know two to three years, we had a, a memory cafe. Mm -hmm. I mean, unfortunately, we had to stop that, and obviously, we're not open to the public, but. You know, perhaps you and I could work together to develop another memory cafe in the future once things get back to some semblance of normality. Absolutely. Dementia is something that's near and dear to me, um, personal experience with it. And my last Council on Aging that I was at right before I left um, to move on, I established a new grant to do a dementia um, a year-long initiative supporting caregivers caring for those with dementia so absolutely it's something really close to me that i um am passionate about terrific terrific that's okay and, and and one of the things that you that you can um you really benefit from i think is that experience you have with bay path right oh, yeah. bay path was such a leader in this has been such a leader in this area in terms of developing these programs Mm -hmm. And I know you, you folks, it, it, the folks at Bay Path worked really closely with Kelly Burt and Christy and uh, and Janice Long over in Hudson, and and my friend Trish Pope actually here in Marlboro in terms of really kind of doing the some of the initial spade work for that program. Right. It was really innovative. Now, are you getting any? I, I'm just curious. Do you, are you getting any calls that are related to folks who are kind of trying to deal with this who have dementia at home? Because boy, that must be tough. I'm trying to imagine. Dealing with somebody who is a little confused anyway, mm -hmm. how do you, and then how exactly do you explain all of this to them? You know? I know. I'm sure it's a huge challenge for people right now. Um, I personally haven't fielded any of those phone calls, but I know our leader for um, our dementia group here, the Daybreak, is calling regularly, checking in with the caregivers, making sure that everyone is doing okay and providing those resources. Um, there are some community resources and free online um, caregiver support groups uh, that I'd like to be sharing on our town website within the next couple days too, so people can participate in those. Well, that would be that's great. And by the way, if you want to have any of that information included in this video, also, right? Oh, sure. So that people, if they wanted to, could kind of click on, could know by watching this and just click on. Uh, Dana um, has been terrific about actually producing these things and then getting them up on the air quickly, right? So th this could end up being really handy for you. Other, other questions, Chris? So I'm curious, Liz, and I know we're all kind of struggling with what the future looks like, but at some point, I, I imagine there will be, you know, services will start to be phased in. I mean, in our case, you know, we probably won't be doing a lot of programs for teens and adults right away. We might do a children's program here and there. Again, you know, phasing in over time, we're considering our summer reading programs, maybe doing some virtual story times. We're already doing those with our children's librarian, Katrina Ireland. At some point, I imagine the bistro is going to reopen to the public. But have you had some discussions about how that might happen? Yeah, it's, it's a really um, difficult thing to predict the future, but we've talked about how we would potentially do a phased, slow reopening, um, but we'd really have to follow the guidance of our, um, of the CDC, the governor, you know, our town um, health agent, and emergency director to figure out how to do that safely, because seniors are such a vulnerable population when it comes to this disease, so we'll really need to follow some um, professional guidance on the safety. Absolutely. It's such a great resource to have the bistro. And I'm sure there aren't many senior centers that have such an amazing, you know, program. I mean, where it's it's providing, you know, a very reasonably cost lunch um, and, and, and just the, the quality of the food. And I know I'm a Rotarian. And so the Rotary also was meeting at the senior center once a week. And that's like for five dollars. It's a fantastic lunch. I can't wait so, to try it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That, and the, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll also add an ad for that because I, I've spent, in the nature of my work, I have spent a lot of time in a lot of senior centers. There is no, the, no place have, is the quality of food better. You know, I think, but I think, once again, that was something that, that Kelly was really focused on also, that she said she realized that the, 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 this, this notion of, of the bistro being even more than a purveyor of food, but like a purveyor of really of like good food 
in a place where literally it, it, you could you could as a senior eventually start saying, well, you know, I'm just going to, I'll see you down at the senior center. You know, it's like, I'll see you down at the senior center for a cup of coffee or I'll, I'll see you down at the, se which is a, a, which is a wonderful thing, a wonderful a feeling to have about a senior center. So mm -hmm. food's right. really, so, so once I know you're the director now, but the chef, so we, we, we recommend the chef highly, right? <laughs> Don't get rid of the chef. chef oh, <laughs> And you know, the other key aspect of the bistro is the social interaction, which is so huge. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that reminds me of another thing I wanted to touch on before we go, that Jocelyn, our outreach worker, is contacting um, many of our residents just to check in. And if there's anyone out there who's watching this who wants just a check-in, either weekly, bi-weekly, even just monthly, call the Senior Center, ask for Jocelyn, and get your name added to our telephone check-in list. Right. So she literally will, will that's a, a service of the senior center. They'll just, you'll just check in with folks. Yep. Fantastic. Just yeah. provide that social interaction that you wouldn't normally get here. Um, right. I mean, our staff is working. We miss seeing everyone's smiling faces. You know, we're, we're here alone. <laughs> so call us, please. So call. Yeah. You know, you know, I know one of the, one of the communities where I work, they, they do that, but it's all done through a robo call. Not mm -hmm. the same experience. Not the same. Just yeah. not the same. You know, I mean, it gets the, you know, the, the notion, a piece of the notion is, you know, once again, for safety purposes, you want to check in with people once a day just to make sure everything's okay, you know, but, but actually doing that kind of outreach and, and, and connecting with people is just, okay. it's, so, again, especially right now, because there's nothing worse. My, you know, my, my wife, we regularly call a wonderful old friend of ours who once again lived in her house till she was 96 and then finally decided she needed to give up the keys to the car, you know, which meant that she needed to leave her house, which meant she moved to assisted living, which means she's locked down, mm -hmm. which means she can't talk to anybody. And she's now 99. Right. And, and, and to get that call every day from somebody, yeah. it's like it's everything. Mm -hmm. So they can call you anytime once again. Right. And you're not going to be mad. <laughs> sure. Now, now, June, can anybody call you also, or do they have to go call call Liz? No, nope. no. <laughs> call us directly on our yeah. telephone line number. And I also want to add that we do, both of us do fuel assistance. And even though the doors are locked to the public in Framingham, that's who we go through, we, are, we found a creative way to still process those applications through SMOC and they've been accepted. So uh, up until April 30th, we are open for that. So please give us a call, even if you're not sure if you qualify, we'll get that information. That's great, that's great. So so, so, Chris. Yes, Arthur. Once again, final question, but then I was just gonna thank you for getting these great guests, which you, you know, always- I, I can't meet, uh, I can't wait to meet both June and Liz in person and, and, and maybe go next door to our bistro next to the library, we have this incredible restaurant. It's a little bit of, of France in North Pearl. It's called C'est la vie bistro. And so, uh, you know, at some point, let's let's get together and talk more about how we can develop, you know, some services um, collaboratively. So I, I appreciate the opportunity to meet with you at least this way, and, and we'll get together in person soon. <laughs> That'd be, that'd be great. Or we may all want to get together at Liz's Bistro, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They got a great, the chef's terrific. Great view. Great view. So, so Liz, thank you very, very much. June, thank you. Chris, thanks for putting this together. We really, thanks, really, really appreciate it. Thank uh, you. And uh, thank you all for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment, which may be as early as next week, uh, on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in North Road, the COVID-19 version. Thank you very much.